Welcome to our Bible lesson this week, boys and girls. I want to uh, introduce you to a uh, new book today. The title of the book is Those Kids in Proverbs Bill by Elizabeth Rice Hanford. And today's story is about the bicycle sort of built for two. Those thrifty kids in Proverbs, though. Steve, what time is it? Hey, that's sure a nice watch. Where'd you get it? Paul was scooping up a jumble of toys and books from the floor of his room. And since Steve was waiting for him to finish so they could ride their bikes into the woods, this watch bought it at the school lost and found sale. It didn't work, but my dad showed me how to clean it. Look, if you don't hurry, we're not gonna be able to take a ride today. Well, I don't know why I have to clean up this room anyway, Paul muttered, tossing a broken transistor radio into the wastebasket. Hold it, what are you throwing away there? Oh, just an old radio. It doesn't work. The case is just cracked, too. May as well throw it away. Well, let's see if we can fix it. Ah, but the case is cracked. Well, we'll use some special glue on it, Steve answered. He unscrewed the back, lifted off the plastic case, and frowned as he looked and saw a wire from the on switch to the battery that was loose. Hmm, broken wire, listen here. He touched the two wires of the together and flipped on the switch and music came blaring out. So you think we can just fix it with some special glue, Paul mused? His eyes squinted with thinking, so, that's how you get all those things you've got. I know my dad makes more money than your dad does. But you have all kinds of gadgets my dad says he can't buy for us. It's my father's philosophy. He says all the time, we'll make do with what we have. Like my bike, he bought it from a kid down the street and found parts for it down at the junkyard. And my bike cost a hundred dollars, Paul sighed. When you get that bike, I when you got that bike, I fussed. And dad made me memorize Proverbs 18 and verse 9. He also is slothful or lazy in his work as brother to him that is a great waster. That says it's as bad to waste good things as it is to be lazy. And once you start thinking that way, it's more fun to make do with what you have rather than spending money all the time. But Steve's ability to find a way to use what came to hand turned to be more than just a neat little trick. It saved Steve and Paul from spending a hungry night in a very dark and lonely forest far from home. They packed a lunch and slung a jug of water over the handlebars and set off into the woods in the hills beyond Foley's Mountain. They had a wonderful day finding all sorts of funny little forest creatures and strange fungus growths. They rolled around in the sun in the open meadow and rested up for their nine mile bike ride home. We'd better head for home if we're going to be there before dark, they proclaimed. But they hardly jumped on their bikes and peeled down on the first hill when Paul's front wheel hit a big tree root. A piece of metal cracked sharply and Paul tumbled into the soft mulch on the forest floor. The two boys looked somberly at the broken front wheel of the bike. My new bike, Paul said, and we're nine miles from home. 
Don't worry, Steve said generously. We'll make do. Let we'll trade off walking and riding. No, we'd be too late if we did that. You ride on ahead. Tell them I'm coming. I can't do that. You might get lost in the dark. Here, I'll I'll ride you home on one bike. But somebody might steal my bike while we're gone. Say, wait a minute. Why couldn't we? Yes, we could. Here, put your front bar here on the back bar of my bike, like this, Steve said, hoisting the front end of Paul's bike to the back of his and hooking the broken joint around the back post. But can we ride it, Paul asked anxiously. Well, let's try. At first they wobbled and fell, but soon they caught on how the bicycle built for two could be ridden. And instead of spending a shivery night in the dark woods, they pedaled triumphantly into Proverbsville, just as the sun reddened the western sky. And so because Steve had learned from his dad there in Proverbs the, to uh, think about how he can use old things and put things together and fix things rather than always throwing them away and getting something new, he was able to make them a bicycle built for two so they could get home safely. And so he was good at taking broken things and making them useful. You know, boys and girls, Jesus does the same thing for us. You know, we're broken because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus can fix us. He can change our hearts. He doesn't throw us away, but he sent Je Jesus came and died on the cross. So when we trust him as our savior, we can be given a new heart and a new life, become new creations in Jesus. And we can become useful and productive for God's service and he can use us. So I hope um, if you don't have this book, those kids in Proverbsville, that um, you'll, um, I'll put it there in the church library when we get back to regular services and you can come back to, uh, to church, hopefully um, in the coming months. Uh, and this will be a good book for you to pick up and read. Hope you have a good week um, this week and that you'll keep uh, uh, trusting and praying for each, each other and, uh, and, and trusting in God.